All right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So for the most part, I mean, everybody has a favorite team in, in every sport, and me playing baseball I have a favorite team in sports. But my favorite team in baseball is different from all the rest because it's the best team in baseball. So I'm, today I'm going to tell you guys why the Yankees are the best baseball franchise in baseball history. Aside from the great success they have, obviously, on the field, let's talk about their great tradition that they're probably the only team that has these type of traditions and they, they've been around for a long time. Let's talk about the stadium. When you go to the stadium, it's obviously a big stature and it's best in the bleachers. Graham Knight states that the bleacher creatures have long been noted for their roundness, but their innovative roll call. Basically, the roll call happens in the first inning Fans in the bleachers chant the name of each New York position player until he acknowledges the crowd with the wave of the glove. This has been going on for years. I mean, you still see it playoff games, no matter how shitty the team is doing, no matter what happens, they're always doing the roll call. Exceptions are pitchers and catchers because, you know, they're usually in tune with the game. Another tradition they have is obviously Bob Shepard. He recently passed this past year. And Bob Shepard is basically the voice of the Yankees. He announced great guys like Mickey Mantle, you know, Roger Maris, people like that. And actually Derek Jeter, before he, uh, before Bob Shepard passed away, went to his house and got an actual recording from Bob Shepard to record his voice so he can keep that tradition alive. Now that I have introduced you guys to the great traditions, let's talk about the great players that have passed through the Yankees organization. Let me throw out some numbers for you to tell you how great the Yankees actually are. 27 World Series, 39 pennants, and 44 players inducted to the Hall of Fame. The Yankees have the most players inducted to the Hall of Fame, and these players are just not great players for the team, but they're the greatest players in baseball. Names such as Mickey Mantle, Reggie Jackson, Joe DiMaggio, Babe Ruth. These, they all wore pinstripes, and they're all considered one of the best in the world. The Yankees have the most retired numbers, and every time a player comes over, they basically can't have any of the numbers because all the greats have already retired their numbers. For an example, A-Rob came to the Yankees. He wore number three with the Rangers. Came to the Yankees, had to change his number to 13 because in the great tradition, they retired the numbers, and he respected that, and he stopped wearing the number. The past years, the Yankees have, the Yankees have three of their four infielders last year with gold gloves, and that hasn't happened in a while. And that's another reason why the Yankees have great players. So the Yankees are also known for their money, but I think the money starts with the owner. And they also have one of the greatest owners in baseball. He recently passed as well this past year. Uh, he was a huge role in them being where they are today, being at the top, being the best in the business. Uh, the owner's name is named George Steinbrenner. He's said to be one of the most famous owners that have ever lived. Stein, who stressed the importance of the brand name. Andrew, Andrew Machan notes, he understood the value of publicity, of creating a buzz of crowding stars, and he became a star himself. Baseball needed the Yankees to set the standard, and he did that. And Jeter, Jeter stated in an interview shortly after Steinbrenner had passed that Steinbrenner was more than just the owner, he was a friend. If you talk to any of the Yankee guys that played for him, even the older guys, they respect the owner, and I don't think a lot of other players can say that about their owner. The Yankees are the best team in history. The accomplishments, along with old school traditions and the hard-nosed boss, sets them alone when talking about the greatest franchise of all time, the Bronx Bombers. That's it. So Tim, what did you think? Uh, I liked it. I thought my, maybe it was a little short. I don't know how he did on time. But besides that, I liked the, he had a lot of quotes to go off of. 
a lot of the examples. Um, yeah, I like it. <laughs> All right, Nolan, you've got a claim of fact that you're presenting here or a claim of value. I guess if you're going to say that they're the best, that's uh, really a claim of value that you're going on with. I, the opening section is okay, but and, and we know what your thesis is, but there's no setup of what the content's going to be. And although you do a little bit of internal signposting during the speech, the organization is problematic. Now, I think you've probably got a structure there, but it's hard to pick out as a casual listener. So you need to do more to make it clear to the audience how this is being put together. At the end of the speech, I, I'm, it basically finished, and I was just settling into listening to what you were talking about. It came pretty quickly. There's not really much of a summary about what your points were. You just kind of reminded us about their history, and then, boom, uh, you were done. Uh, I thought you had a couple of interesting ideas for uh, establishing uh, a criteria for a value as to what makes a team the best, what makes them unique. And you, and you mentioned, for instance, uh, the traditions and the history and the connection that the players have to that tradition and history. And I like that idea. W what we need is a little bit of comparison that no other team has those kinds of things because the truth is that every team I'm sure has some kind of tradition and history but why are the ones that you're talking about particularly unique or important why are they better than other um, traditions I think that that would be something that you could spend a little bit more time on I like the idea of the roll call and you talk about all the uh, numbers being retired and they face a little bit of a problem with that because they have so many retired numbers uh, so I thought that th there was some uh, good development on that point. Outside of that, uh, it just was a little, like I said, underdeveloped. You're talking about the owner, and I think that's uh, interesting. Of course, uh, you had, I mean, the announcer's dead, the owner's dead. I mean, maybe we should rephrase this. The Yankees were the best team in baseball, but two out of the three things that make them the best are now gone. Man, that seems like a, a strange way to set up your speech on an argument like this. That's a little bit problematic. The presentation things are pretty solid. I, I think you do a good job looking at the audience, and there's nice variety in your voice. You have excellent eye contact. You are swaying a little bit back and forth on your feet. If you, when you watch it, you'll see yourself kind of moving around a little bit. It's, uh, you know, it, it looks a little bit awkward. You never look quite comfortable. You sound fine, and your, uh, like I said, your audience contact is good, but uh, the other things I think are a little bit problematic. And it's four minutes and eight seconds, so it's a little brief. All right. There's a, there's a good joke there, but I can't think of the right way to say it. A, a little brief, you know, something like... Uh, I know you well, yeah. Wee man's underwear or something like that. 